Hi, these are truly unprecedented times. Crazy, really. But it is incredibly and personally inspiring for me to see how our church is rising to the challenge that we face. We find ourselves in an incredible time in human history. The COVID-19 virus is causing chaos in every sphere of society. For instance, church gatherings in the UK have received advice that we should suspend all public worship services and gatherings until further notice. And that's what we're going to do. We're doing just that. And we would like to direct you to all of our online platforms. Uh, and a list of those things will be at the end of this message. Fear is gripping the hearts and minds of people everywhere. Current predictions from organisations like WHO are dire should this pandemic not be stopped. But I believe this is where the church must stand in the gap. This is our hour. As long as we act with wisdom and faith. Now, I'm no super spiritual. You all know me. So I'm not advocating anything crazy here. So please, take the moments needed and listen carefully. There are a few things that we can do beyond washing our hands and keeping social distancing from others. Now please, keep doing these things. Listen to reputable medical guidelines and advice from reputable sources. Fact check Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Not everything you see is true and correct. But there are things that we can do now. Number one, keep calm. The word of God says, fear not. Can I encourage you? Relax. This virus crisis has not taken God by surprise. Even in the midst of this difficult time, we don't want to just throw our faith to the wind. What kind of Christians would we be if we did that? In the midst of difficulty, we have faith. We practice all the guidelines provided by our government and the medical professionals, and we allow God's peace to surround us and to surround our hearts. Let me encourage you, relax. Romans 1 verse 17 says, the righteous will live by faith. Can I encourage you that that's pretty good advice even for right now? Let's live by faith. The only way to calm and quieten our spirits is if we know that the Lord is in charge, that he is sovereign, that he is king, and it doesn't matter what we're going through. The Bible encourages us to trust him, to trust his word. Receive peace during this frantic and anxious time. Can I encourage you? Don't panic. Trust in God. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Amen. Number two, keep in touch with the more vulnerable people around you. Be aware of those who are doing it tough or who are alone. Offer to do some shopping for them, to dash to the pharmacy for them. These are exactly the times that we as the church rise up to shine and be all that God has called us to be. Be a community that restores hope in the darkness. Get on your phone, FaceTime, text, email. Be in touch with those that you feel who are most vulnerable. Number three. Be kind to everyone. There are some people around you who may be freaking out. They have never seen anything like this before. Many people in our communities are afraid. They feel vulnerable and they feel alone. Be kind. Withhold your judgment. Be a bringer of peace and hope. Don't be judgmental towards those who decide to respond in a different way than you would. Everyone has their own reasons for responding to this crisis as they do. Be a beacon of peace. Let people see your faith and be kind towards others. Finally, number four, pray. What a brilliant time it is for us to pray for each other. What an opportunity for us to pray over our, our city, our country, and to pray for this world that God so loved. To help us in our prayer, I want to encourage you to join me in a strategy for prayer called a call to prayer, COVID-19. So, every day, starting today, the 19th of March, at 1900, I want you to set an alarm, and I'd like you to join with me, and just pause for a few minutes to pray. Pray. Believe God. The Bible says that the prayers of a righteous person have great effect. 
So number one, pray for yourself and your family. Ask God to keep you safe from the virus. In prayer, speak words of faith over your lives. Read and pray Psalm 91 over your life, over your children's life, over your parents' and grandparents' lives. Believe God. Listen, I still believe that prayer is powerful. Pray about the economic impact of this crisis. Pray for people who can't afford to stay at home, people who will lose their jobs during this time, and for people who will be challenged financially during this time. We still believe that our God is a provider, that he will provide. Let's pray for the Lord to meet our needs. I don't know about you, but I still believe in miracles. Pray for our church during this time of upheaval, keeping our people in your heart. Ask God to keep them safe and healthy. Ask God to bring us all great peace as we live our lives in these interesting times. Be in touch with one another. Even though we won't be able to actually go to somebody's house, we've got FaceTime or Skype for those of you that use Android. We can be in touch with people. Text, email, phone calls. Don't practice that kind of social distancing. Be in touch with people. Pray for our cities of Norwich, Ipswich and Bratislava. Pray that through this crisis, our hospitals and healthcare professionals have the strength to cope and to care for those in need. Pray that our cities would exercise compassion and wisdom when shopping and traveling, keeping those most vulnerable at the forefront of our minds. Pray that the implications of this virus will not cripple our cities. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for those you know who are in vulnerable places. Try contacting them with small notes, a card or a phone call, asking if they are all right and need anything from the shops or the pharmacies. Let's pray for our national leaders, that they move wisely, swiftly, and with concern for our nation and its people, and that these things would be utmost in their minds and hearts as they make decisions on our behalf. Pray for our nations, that we will not only make it through, but we'll be stronger at the end. Let's pray for our nation in response to COVID-19. The 19th at 1900 hours is simply an effective reminder for us to connect with God in prayer. Let's lead the way as the church by praying in faith for God to move during this time. Amen.